So here's a video of Adam rolling up to the job because I had the drone out and I was bored. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about wall framing and standing walls today. Alright, we're blowing our walls together and I uh, wanted to take a minute to talk about the layout for an opening. So we have a rough opening of 32 and a half inches, um, mark those out from our center, and then we pre-assemble our jack and king stud assembly so that those can go in as one unit. Once those are in, how we're framing this one is we've got three pieces here. We've got our sill, which will go down at the bottom, and then we've got uh, two heads for our header box and our header. So. The first guy <coughs> goes in like this, and usually what I do is I nail that one solid, six, six, sixteens, because that's the code. And then uh, I'll put in my first header to create our header box, nail this tight, and then we'll fit our header in above that all the way to the outside like that window so that it is on the outer part of the wall where the sheeting is and then we'll put the other chunk of our header box in and then we'll cut a couple cripples to fit to maintain our 16 layout once we have that done we'll go back and we'll measure down 52 inches that's the rough opening we'll toenail this guy in and then we'll carry our 16 layout up to the sill um, some guys put another like cripple or jack stud here under the sill, but the sill is really not carrying any weight. So we're gonna toenail it and then just put um, our 16s so that our drywall lays out really nice in here. So and that's a look at the uh, window framing. Obviously for a header, we do the same thing, except there is no sill. And eventually when we stand the wall up, we will cut out the uh, bottom plate there so that the exterior door can sit down onto the subfloor. So that should wrap up uh, our wall layout. I'll frame up these windows and let you guys see the finished product. And in the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about the actual blowing the wall together and how we do that process. So picking up where we left off, this wall is gonna be a little goofy because we have to put this sheet on after it's stood up and we're gonna put a sheet on over here after it's stood up. And then we're also going to run our uh, weather barrier after it's stood up so that we can lap it long into whatever is going on behind that mess. Uh, so this is as far as we're gonna take this one. We just got a laundry room window in it. Um, we're gonna leave this last stud out and fasten it to the wall nice and tight. So we're gonna pop this window, stand it up. Adam's gonna run some PL quick, the detail on that is to put um, some on top of this underneath the plate and then some on the sill where this guy laps into it. So that's the detail for those. I'll have to see kind of where we're at with videos. I've lost track uh, while we've been building stuff. So we'll just have to see where we're at. But I'm hoping we can get that one stood up. We'll get all of our two by fours and stuff loaded in on the deck in here. And then we'll build this one and stand this one up. And then we can build our interior partition walls after everything is stood up inside. What's up guys? We're gonna do a quick video on wall jacks. It's been a little while since I've used these last. Most of the time uh, we can get at it with either the tock or the telehandler. Um, but we don't really have room for that because there's a garage in the way. So. We're going to use the wall jacks, so we'll talk about those for a second, and we'll lift this guy up. So we got our long wall. This one is 28 foot and an inch, and we've got our two wall jacks at uh, 7 feet in from each end, roughly, or about a quarter of the span. It also is nice because it's right where the top plates lap, so there's some extra structure there. So... Uh, we're going to get our glue detail worked out down there for air sealing and then Adam will pump on one and I'll pump on the other and slowly but surely the whole wall will stand up and then we'll be good to go. 
pretty simple, pretty rudimentary. It's nice that you can use some framing lumber. You don't have to have anything special for that. So we just nail a block on the floor on either side and then up we go. So it looks like you guys get a video in a video. Um, I think I was going to break this out, but it would just be a little too short to make a video on wall jacks. So we're just going to leave it in with the wall framing. Um, as you can see, it's pretty easy. We had to adjust because we probably should have had a little bit longer board, but it worked out. I also put the tack there just to make sure that no accidents happened. Uh, and then this is the uh, more traditional way of lifting walls, but obviously these are pretty hefty, so the big one had to use the jacks. Pretty simple. All right, we got our wall up. Uh, these ones work out really nice on the uh, wall where the TGIs land because you can actually get the three inch nail down into the TGI web. But in this case, um, or into the TGI flange, I think I'm thinking. But in this case, we just went through next to every stud and nailed down into the subfloor. So once the PL sets, that's a pretty solid connection. Um, went through and uh, got made sure this corner was good and plumbed up and nailed that guy off. And then uh, to the house, I sent one big GRK in to kind of pull it tight. Uh, which also helped us plumb that wall up and then tacked it in and then we're going to double top plate it it's always important with your double top plate to run your butt walls onto your through wall so this one is the length of this plus five and a half inches so we're going to put that on and that'll make a really nice tight connection in that upper corner so i don't really remember where i left off I know we talked about double tap plates. Uh, I know we've talked about some layout. I know we've talked about framing. Um, we're doing these header boxes. So we had the headers specced out by an engineer. These are, he, he specced a 2 0, 7 and a quarter. We've got two ones because that's what was available. Um, we talked about the ceiling that Adam's doing uh, with PL on the sill plate and the uh, underneath the bottom plate, so when we tilt the wall up, we're good. Uh, exterior sheeting, we've got 716 OSB on this one because that's what's cheap. Um, once we have our windows laid out, we do those. Uh, we're trying out this Metabo router. It's pretty sweet so far for being a cordless. Uh, cordless router, it's got a little bit more oomph than a couple of the other ones. Um, but so far so good. So you guys might see more Metabo stuff coming around, um, just trying it out. So this one's got an awning window. It's two three foot awnings side by side. Um, we're gonna stand this wall up the same that we stood that one up. And then we'll talk about kind of detailing out the exterior package uh, when we're all said and done here. So hopefully I have enough information that we can figure it out. And then we can always talk more about framing walls and later series is, 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 is. so this is where we're at and this is we're going to leave it for now um, i've actually got a plank set up to go through that corner uh, directly into the trailer which has been nice for loading and unloading tools uh, next up we will probably talk about uh, the big beam that we have to put in to uh, open up the kitchen wall and then we'll go from there with framing so Hopefully you guys are enjoying this series. I apologize that uh, I got a little jumbled with my videos on this one. Um, obviously trying to pay attention and make sure I do a good job for my client, but also wanting to bring more content to YouTube and uh, the GoPro was out of commission for a little while. So uh, that's where we're at. Like, comment, and subscribe down below if you think I earned it. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.